This is part 10 of C tutorial series. I am Arjun. In today's session, we will discuss about C object files and their memory layouts. It is very important to know the sections and segments of these object files in order to understand how internally scope and lifetime of variables work. And also, we will understand many concepts such as storage class specifiers in a crystal clear manner if we have a minimum knowledge on these object files. I suggest you to watch these videos before proceeding with this session. In this video, we are going to use a tool called RadialF to see what object files contain. To do that, we need a Unix or Linux based operating system. In part 6 of this series, I have explained how to install Linux terminal in Windows. First, we will see what are these object files. Object files contain the binary representation of a program. We can also say that the information that this object files has is a low level information where it is pretty hard to understand by a human. These object files are generated by assembler or linker. In Linux, object files are in ELF format that is executable and linkable file format whereas in Windows, these object files are in portable executable format or common object file format. From a C program that is .c file, we can generate three types of object files. They are relocatable object file, executable object file and shared object files. As of now, we are not gonna use shared object files. So, we will discuss about the shared object files in our upcoming videos. What are these relocatable object files? What does it contain? Relocatable object files hold code and data which is suitable for linking with other object files. These files are generated by assembler. We can create an executable and shared object files by using these relocatable object files. You can use the below command to generate a relocatable object file from a .c file. Open your Linux terminal and navigate your project directory. Now if you notice here, we have a .c file which we have written in our previous sessions. Now open this file by using the command vim space file name .c. If you see here, we have a hello world program here. Now exit from the editor by pressing escape colon wq and enter the command gcc c space hello world c. Now check whether we got a relocatable object file or not. If you see here, we got a relocatable object file. Now let's see what does this file contain. This is the structure of a relocatable object file. If you notice here, at beginning, we have an ELF header. This ELF header describes about the ELF file. We'll see what does it contain. And next, we have a section header table, which contains the information about all the sections in the ELF file. That is, it will tell at which position a section is present. In relocatable object files, we'll be having many sections. But these are four important sections that we should need to understand. They are dot text, dot data, dot ro data, and dot bss. The program which we write will be stored in dot text section. If you notice, this section has only two permissions that is read and execute. Remember, we don't have a write permission to this section. And next, we have a dot data section. All initialized global and static variables will be stored in this dot data section. For dot data section, we will be having both read and write permissions. In our data, we store information such as string literals. We can also call this our data as read only data, that is, we don't have permissions to write into this our data. And finally, we have dot bss section. This dot bss section contains uninitialized static and global variables. Now, let's see practically whether all this information is present in an relocatable object file or not. Now, open your Linux terminal and enter the command readlf a space relocatable object file name pipe less. This will show the contents in relocatable object file. Now if you notice here, at beginning, we have an ELF header. If you scroll little bit up, we have a section header table here. 
Just notice here, this section header table contains the information about all the sections in an ELF file. Here, I just wanted you to understand about these four sections. Now, let's see about an executable file. This executable object file holds the binary instructions which are suitable for execution, whereas we cannot directly execute a relocatable object file. Linker will generate these executable files by combining one or more relocatable object files. Just enter the below command to generate an executable object file from a .c file. If you notice here, we got an executable object file. Now let's see what does this file contain. If you see here, we also have an ELF header in an executable object file. And instead of section header table, we have a program header table. In relocatable object files, we have sections, whereas in executable object files, we have segments, that is, multiple sections are combined together to form as one segment. If you notice here, this code segment is formed by combining .code and .rw data sections, whereas data segment is formed by combining .data and .bss sections. If you notice here, we have two segments here, that is, stack and heap segment. Stack segment contains the stack frames which are created when the program is in execution. Each stack frame holds the data which is generated by instructions inside the functions. Remember, stack segment doesn't hold any instructions. It just holds the multiple stack frames which are capable to store the data of multiple functions. For every function, a new stack frame will be created. That is, the data of that function will be stored in its own stack frame. Remember, it is impossible to predict the size of stack frame before the program is in execution. And next, it is heap segment. Heap segment is used for dynamic memory allocation. That is, if the user requested memory while the program is in execution, then it is known as a dynamic memory allocation. Dynamically, memory will be allocated from the heap segment. By using functions called malloc or calloc, we can do dynamic memory allocation. And it has both read and write permissions. Now, use the read ELF to see what does this executable file contain. Open your terminal and enter the command readlf a space executable file name. If you notice here, we have an ELF header. Also, if you notice, we have a section header table in an executable object file. Remember, section header table is not a mandatory in executable object file. We need section header table when we want to combine this executable object file with another relocatable object file. And here, we have a program header table. This program header table is very important in an executable object file because the process image will be created by using the program header table. This is the main reason why we can't directly execute a relocatable object file because it doesn't contain a program header table. Now, when we press dot slash a dot out, a process image will be created and that image will be kept on the RAM. This is how it looks like in RAM. Here, we need to remember few important points. They are in Linux, we will divide the memory into multiple blocks called pages, where each page is of size 4 MB by default. Code segment will be placed in the page which is having only read and execute permissions. So, when a user tries to write into this code page which is having only read and execute permissions, we will get a segment fault error from kernel level. And finally, the most important point that we should need to remember is always tag grows from top to bottom that is from higher address to lower address whereas heap grows from bottom to top that is from lower address to higher address now let's see a quick summary on what we have discussed today object files contain a binary representation of a program in linux object files are categorized into three types they are relocatable object file executable object file and shared object file relocatable object file holds code and data which is suitable for linking with other relocatable object files to produce an executable or shared object file. These are some of the sections which relocatable object file contains. An executable object file contains a program and data which is suitable for execution. This executable object file will be generated by the linker by combining multiple relocatable object files. 
it contain few segments such as code and data remember the main agenda of this session is to make you understand about the sections and segments of an object file we will see more in depth about these sections and segments while going further that's all for this session thank you for listening see you later in next session